Hey everyone, I'm back. Um, I did post a video the other day, but, um, something happened, so I had to delete it. Um, but weird things have been happening, and I don't know what it is. I heard a walking in my house yesterday, but I was home alone, and my dog was on on the couch. She still is. Just sleeping away. And it's... 8.41 in the morning, and normally this will be too early for me, but for some reason I woke up earlier than I normally do, which is afternoon. I like sleeping, so. Um, but aside from all of that, not other, not really much of that, and I've been seeing no cattle fingers, but um, kind of weirded out, but not really at the same time. Thinking it was family members. Considering the, a few days ago, in 2021, my nanny, also known as my grandmother, passed away. So, put him in her, and put him in my brother and sister. Who knows? But, um, I didn't feel threatened. So, that's good. Although, I still think my house is haunted, or at least the woods in my house. I always had weird things about the woods when we moved in. I don't know why. Maybe because... I don't know. But I literally always had weird feelings about the woods. I never told anyone, though. Because it's just weird. But anyway. Before I continue, it's even creepier at night. I mean, woods are generally creepy at night, but... Not a lot is known about those ones. I might have to go out there one day when I'm brave enough. And I haven't been in those part in the woods in like years. I've been in my friend's backyard and they were so creepy. Anyway, let's continue our our Alabama tour. And as I'm doing research for in Alabama, I'm like, I wanna go like right now. In the following years of the Civil War, Ronamed, land developers, and scepters moved to Zones Valley to take advantage of the area's rich mineral resources. All the ingredients needed to make iron lay within the 30-mile 30 30 radius, seams of iron, or, or stressed from stretched for 25 miles through Red Mountain, the southern boundary of the of the of Jones Valley. To the north and west were abundant of this coast of coal, deposits of coal, while limestone, dolomite, and clay under, underlay the valley itself. In 1871, southern expert Ex Extrem Pure Extremures found in a new city called B Birmingham and began a systematic exploration of its minerals. One of these men was Col Colonial James Wither Slots, a North Alabama Alabama merchant and railroad man. Cologne Slots played an important role in the founding of the city by convincing an LAN railroad and capitalized completion of the South and North Rail Lane through Jones Valley, the site of the new town. In 1880, having helped the form the Coat and Cologne Company with was mined and sold Birmingham's first high grain cooking pole. Cooking pole. He founded the Salt Furnace Company, and two years later blew in the second mass furnace in Birmingham. Now, as I was doing research for the Salt Furnace, I stumbled upon a few videos on YouTube. And one of them was from Omar Goss TV. Shout out to you if you're watching this. 
and he is actually one of the YouTubers I watch. And now that I remember, Ghost Hunters Taps, and I think Ghost Adventurers have been there. So it is extremely haunted, and I'm like, I want to go. Yeah, I'm, I'm crazy. To tell you all of you my craziness, I have a sucky doll upstairs. Put him in him walking. God, I'm losing my mind. Construction of Schlock's new furnace, City Furnace, began in June of 1881. When ground was broken on a 50-acre 50, 50 site that had been donated by the Elden Land Company, Har Harry Harmonsfin, a European-born engineer, was in charge of construction. Harmonsfin has been has been a pupil of Thomas Whitewell, a British inventor who designed the stoves and would supply the hot air blast for the new furnace. 60 feet high and 18 feet in diameter, the Slots' new Whitewell stoves were the first of their time ever built in Birmingham and were comparable to similar equipment used in the North. Local observers were pr proud that much of the mercenary used by Slots' new furnace would be the southern, would be um, southern manufacture, including two blowout glowing engines and 10 boilers, 30 feet long and 40, 46 inches in diameter. In April of 1882, the furnace went to blast. After a few years of operation, the furnace sold 24,000 tons of iron, and at 1883, Lewisville Exposition, the company won a bronze medal for best pink iron during the 1880s, as pink iron production in Alabama grew from 68,995 to 706,692. Roach tons. New, new, no fewer than eighteen, nineteen glass furnace would be built in Jefferson County alone. Pet Pierre Doctor W. David Lewis, author of Sloss Furnace and the Rise of the Birmingham District. Sloss Furnace was born at the time when Dolores of the po of the post war era and had ended at the South, was feeling a measure of confidence for the first time since the, oper since the opening years of the Civil War. The planners' roll rail roll railroad ma magnets include such as slots, slots received as one at uh, at. I cannot talk this morning. As one Alabama newspaper stated, a degree of alteration excuse me, previously reserved were military heroes. Of November of 1881, the Birmingham Press promoted slots and hand the light, handed it, for governor. His excitement, business qualifications, brilliant intellect, splendid character, and fine exclusive exclusive ability all combined make him the grandest man in Alabama to, in Alabama today for our safe executive. He is the very personification of Christian manhood and integrity, possessing, possessing the qualifications of head and heart, which we so should inhumanly. Inspired by such a relentless Alabama, not, oh, not surprisingly eager to embrace what was being called a gospel 
um, industrialism. The famous W. Salt retired in 1886 and sold the company to the group of financials who got it through a period of rapid, of rapid expansion. The company recognized in 1899 uh, as Salt Field Steel and Iron, although it was never to make steel. steel. Within the acquisition of additional furnaces and exclusive mineral lands in the north of Alabama, Snob Shield became the second largest merchant pink iron company in Birmingham District. Company assets included seven blast furnaces, a thousand five one thousand five hundred beehive. Coke ovens, 120,000 or acres of coal in Orland, five Jefferson County coal, warming, coal mines, and two red ore mines, ground ore mines, and quarries in North Birmingham. By World War One, Slots Town was among the largest producers of pink iron in the world. In the, in, the in the late 1930s, World War II expanded the market for iron and steel and created jobs for Birmingham workers. In 1940, by 1941, when America entered the war, nearly half of the labor forces was employed in by the iron and steel mining industries. More than two hundred thirds of industries workers of, were African American. Despite being dominated from African labor, the industrial workplace was really segregated until the 1960s. Workers and slob made in separate bath bathhouses, punched separate times, clocks, and attended separate, co separate company picnics. More importantly, was the segregation absorbed. The company operated as a hierarchy at the top at the top were a was as all white group managers chemistry according to accountants and engineers at the bottom of the African labor gain assassinated assassinated I am so sorry for that. Until the demise in 1982 by the U.S. conflict labor, Slot utilized the conflict necessary system only in its coal mines, as Lewis noted in Foss Furnace, conflicting labor, mostly black African, was important weapon in the district, in district economic warfare with Northern, Northern Manufacturing Slavery had not died, but merely men transformed. In the middle of the racially mixed group performing, performed a variety of skilled and semi-skilled jobs. Even, the middle, even in the middle group, however, white workers held the higher paying, higher Stats title, presented stone tenders, boiler makers, carpenters, and merchants. African American workers were restricted to a test helper. Road has carpenter, helper, merchant helper, and stove tender helper. Health became involved in the road in the 1850s. In the railroads in the 1850s, and 15 years later, ended up as president of the Nashville and Decor Line. During the post post-war period, North not only promoted the development of Southern Rail, but became one of the chief proponents of Alabama's post-war industry development. Before I continue. I did read that there was a lot of 
things about African Americans during that time, and I'm going to be completely respectful as much as I can to any information I find. And also, if you see any orbs or anything in the background, please let me know. I feel like I'm seeing inside in the corner of my eye. I mean, my makeup, but... In 1871, he had struck a deal with the LN... LN... Excuse me. LAN Railroad to complete a 67... Excuse <laughs> A 67 mile gap of the Southern and North Railroad between Birmingham and Detour. Ultimately, ultimately reaching the Gulf of Mexico, the LA and N invested more than 30, 30 million in furnaces, mines, war homes, steam ships, Nine and other Alabama options. By 1888, it was falling in entire cotton crop. Not the system to grain in the LA and N transform Birmingham from a Washington. Boston had more some tent paintings and boxcars into a thriving community. At anxious and tap the rich mineral resources surrounding Birmingham, talk along with fellow Birmingham promoters, Henry De Dean Barnumlin and James Aldrich acquired 30,000 acres and formed the Pat Coral and Coke Company. Hunter Pratt soon became. Everything is just distracting me this morning. Pratt soon became the largest mining enterprise in the district. In the early 1880s, with back of with the backing of Henry de Barnumlin, Soft founded the Soft Furnace Company with two years in the brew. The second last furnace, second last furnace in Birmingham, called City Furnace. The plant was located at the eastern end of downtown, at the in at the intersection of two major railroads. The majority of Soft King Iron ended up in Cincinnati, Louisville, Chicago, and Cleveland. Bang Iron cost the northern plants average $18.30 per ton in 1884, while Bang Iron in the South could be produced for $10 to $11 a ton. By the 1880s, Birmingham was booming and had an end, end, mm, earned the nickname the Magic City. South retired in 1880. 1886, and sold the company to a group of financiers who guided it through a period of rapid expansion. The company recognized um, the company recognized in 1899 as thought that steel and iron, although it never made steel. With the equipment of furnace and expensive mineral lands in North Alabama, Slotfield became the second largest merchant bank iron company in Birmingham District. Thanks, Mathers. Slot continued to be interested in continued to be more interested in iron steel making until his death in of May of 19, 1890. North, a ornately the National Train Journal Iron Age, stretched his far seeing thing discriminate 
then Dynamo Energy and Modern Ideas. Toth received a National Historic Landmark connection in 1981 and opened its list in September of 1983 as a, muse as a museum of the city of Birmingham. And its collection consists of 40, 400 ton black furnace, some 40 other, and some 40 other buildings. Nothing remain, nothing remains of the original furnace complex. The oldest building on, on the site dates from 1902, and the houses that the 18 steam driven blow engines used to provide air to Used to provide air for combustion of in the furnace. The engines themselves date to the period from the period 1900 to 1902 and are unique important collection. Engines such as these powered American industrial revolution. The boiler installed in eight, in 1906 and 1940-14. Produced steam for the site until it closed in nineteen in nineteen seventy. Between nineteen twenty seven and nineteen thirty one, the plan underwent constructed consenting program of mercenization. Most of its man major major operations equipped. The blast furnace in sourcing the casting mercury was replaced at the time. In 1927 and 28, two of the furnace were rebuilt, enlarged, and refilled with merchant charging equipment. Doubling the plant, the plant capacity while the strong, strongly reflected reflux. The changes made from 1927 to 1931. Plumbing the technology is more current. The company built a dehumidification plant during World War II it redu to reduce consumption of coke. Use the system was discontinued when the war ended, but the, but the building equipment remained. In the late 1940s, the company to slang, but the, but the, the company to slang grant her leaders to pursue the expanding slang needed to make structural concrete. But about two thirds of the historic structure site was established, were established using ground funds approving by Birmingham voters in 1977. Parts of the site were also adapted for for use as a center of community and the fake events for an event program in the martial arts. Not now post concert concerts, festivals and conferences, as well as workshop and exceptionism by now my helping people from from new attachments to the old furnace these programs and slots and save and port by the company as it was almost a hundred years. Not currently Toth currently the 120th country mass furnace in the U.S. being preserved and interpreted as a historical industrial site. The dramatic scale and complex of the plan, industrial structure, merchants and tools making the slots collection a unique con contribution to the interpretation of the 20th century iron making technology and present presence and remarkable preserving on the area when America grew to world industrial dominance. 
At the same time, soft one is an important reminder of hopes and struggles of the people who work in the industries that made some men wealthy and Birmingham the magic city meat to, to the mine mineral. Wool and other productions fight Wool and other productions finally in nineteen forty nine in 1951, the company replaced the old boiling engines to two thermal blowers. The historic sauce is an 18 acre urban oasis that became quite the tourist attraction. Every year, the rustic collection of blast stoves and smokestacks. Welcome visitors all over the world to, to wish to explore its magical maze of pipes that was once booming business in the heart of Birmingham, Alabama. Despite the innocent appearance, there's more to the sight than meets the eye. During the day, people tore this in amused flats, furnace that used to produce over a thousand tons of pink iron every day. Tourists get an open close view of massive equipment where hundreds of workers used to labor the, in the sweaty, smothering heat. We also get to wander in the grounds to the giant sand buckets, dark wet tunnels, and under the landmark of one kind steel master art and their few new visitors of Ancient Ancient Center. This $5.7 million, 16,000 square acre foot center had 12 square feet for expeditions and over $40 million of furnishing. It also has one of the rarest steel structures in the country. Classic poet, poet hunt structures are half circle with which is about 1800 degrees. So, I think the vision of the architect, still master, had to design the arts beyond that 1800 degree, excuse me, beyond that 1800 degree mark. This art is, is one of the few that actually curves more than a half circle. Forming more cynical shape, this custom steel art is not only the unusual thing about this landmark. Once sunset, the visitors all return home. Some stay, some stay visitors from another dimension remain on the grounds of Stoss Furnace. Paranormal investigators have named the site one of the top 100 places in the world for paranormal activity. Folks have reported all kinds of spooky happenings around Sloss Furnace that will make even a thrill-seeker spin crawl. Some say they have heard voices, the sounds of footsteps, and clanging of heavy metal chains against the furnace, rapidly dropping temperatures around certain areas, and some say they even seen shadowy or glowing fingers following them in the dark. A few have even reported a gentle push or shove by an unknown force. This, these experiences have attracted ghost hunters from all over the county. Several crews have set up equipment and slots claim to have recorded some of the mysterious fingers and unexplained sounds. There is an interesting story surrounding the Surrounding the haunted history of Slot, um, Slot's furnace. Many believe the shadow fingers are the spiritual remains of men who worked in the factory in the earlier days. The conditions for the workers at that time, at that time, were deportable and a number of labor met their nets on the site. Slot, George Beck, opened back in 1882, and it was a beacon of hope for the insane American dreams. It was once called the Magic City because of how quickly it turned the company of, uh, 
and turn around the economic the economy can't talk this morning of Birmingham. Hopefully immigrants flock to the city expect, expecting to find old paved road to success. But instead they came, they became trapped in a smoke filled extremely dangerous dead dead end job where many met their deaths and other were severely injured. In the summer, the furnace could get up to 150 degrees, but the men were not allowed to make allowed in many breaks during their 12-hour shifts. The men were exposed to hazardous breathing conditions and was a perf the perfect recipe for deadly accidents. According to Lessend, there was one particular time in Sloth history when nearly 50 workers died in a horrific accident on the reign of a man named Paul Slack. Although near such despite the spew about his existence, Slack is known as James Robert Warmhood. They say he was a triangle foreman who was brought on board in 1903. He was in charge of the graveyard shift and was abused and was abusive to the workers. The, the lesson says Slag forced his men to speed up the production to impress the bosses and forced them to make to take dangerous risks. They say more men died under Slag than any other foreman in history. Some say the workers grew tired of Slag and his operative ways and when when conspired to, to kill him. Slag fell to his death from the highest glass furnace into a huge mixture of molten iron. Now many people have reported hearing see, hearing or seeing slag hanging around the furnace at night. You don't need special equipment or a team of ghost hunters to explore the, smear, the smeary sights at slots. During the month of October, this historic empty site is transformed into a Halloween horror factory. Actual notes can be quite unre unreliable. So names spent about 30, 30, 300,000 on Hollywood special effects to load the trail with monsters and horrific scenes. They call this not, they call this the Freight Furnace, and it includes the spine tingling mark over into the furnace, furnace catwalk, underground con underground tunnels and new dark passageways. In 2017, they included a journey to the silent home, uh, home of Slag, brave participants with the chance to experience the demented memories that drove Slang to madness. <laughs> If I had a soy and lived closer, I would definitely go there in a heartbeat. I would love to investigate that place. And many people have. And bravely do. Um, yes, I am a little concerned that if I do end up going to these places, something might be attached to me and follow me home. Which I do not want. But, um... It's what I do. It's what I want to expand more of what I do. Because there's nothing really haunting here that would give me permission to um, hunt during the night. But anyway, thank you guys for watching my channel and videos. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I am Haunted Girl, and I'll spook you later. The paranormal is my playground. Until next time, pleasant dreams.